In the easternmost parts of Indonesia, an independence struggle has been rumbling on for decades, largely unnoticed by the rest of the world. Papua officially became part of Indonesia in 1969 after a controversial and very limited vote. Since then, there have been calls for independence from the government in Jakarta. Foreign journalists are restricted from working in Papua, but Newsnight has obtained rare footage of independence fighters based deep in the Papuan jungle. The man who filmed the pictures has asked to remain anonymous to protect those who helped him. Rachel Harvey, the BBC's correspondent in Indonesia until 2006, reports. Papua's freedom fighters. This is 2,000 miles from the Indonesian government in Jakarta. Culturally, it feels even further. We are ready to fight Indonesia and to die for our land. Papua is a land of mountains and jungle, roughly the size of Spain. For decades, a low-level battle for independence has been waged here. Few foreigners venture beyond the main towns. This remote highland outpost is Wamina. These pictures were filmed by a British man keen to document the independence struggle. From here, he travelled undercover aided by local activists and without the permission of the Indonesian authorities. It took nine hours by car and a further 16 hours trekking through the jungle to reach the stronghold of the Free Papua Movement rebels. From one hilltop to another, a smoke signal confirms the approach of friends, not foe. Misunderstandings could be fatal. The greeting rhythmically reinforced. The response, a distant gunshot. Permission granted. The camp's reception committee. But they aren't here just to welcome strangers. The real focus of all this excitement is the appearance of another honoured guest. The rebel commander, General Goliath Tabuni. This is my land. Our ancestors gave us this land. We want independence. Indonesia has stolen our land from us. How long have we been suffering in the jungle? How many people have died? There are just so few of us now. The roots of the struggle run deep. Papuans don't look like other Indonesians. They're Melanesian, ethnically closer to Aboriginals than Asians. Their integration into the wider archipelago in the 1960s was controversial. There has always been opposition to it, but the violent resistance is increasingly fragmented and poorly armed. Its power lies as much in its symbolism as it does in its ability to wage war. Many Papuans feel their culture and identity is slowly being eroded. <laughs> Migrants from other Indonesian islands now make up about half the local population, and some of those incomers consider the traditional Papuan way of life backward and uncivilized. Layers of grievance have built up over the decades. <laughs> We've had enough. Indonesia has committed crimes, killing people and other human rights abuses. But we're suffering and it will be over for us, just like what happened to the Aborigines. 
Pedirala segalanya. Future fears lamented. What will we do when our husbands have all been killed, sing the women in the rebel camp. Over the years, there have been serious abuses committed by the Indonesian security forces, and the police and military are in Papua in large numbers. The Indonesian security forces are always looking for us, for anyone talking about independence. We have to keep running away. When we go back to our farmland, sometimes they are still hiding there. They arrest us and sometimes rape the girls. It makes it very difficult for us. So now we stay in hiding. <laughs> 